world and of course welcome to the stars and Tri- stripes show proudly brought to you by the u.s embassy in Khabarone in partnership with of course gabs fm america in botswana and today the theme of today is defense and of course i've got some crazy crazy people in studio crazy in a good way don't ever think that it's a bad thing and in particular the strong bilateral relationship and partnership between our amazing bdf otherwise known as botswana defense force and the u.s army and of course i've got some great people in studio we've already done a challenge one of them can do over 120 press up so he says i don't know if we'll do the challenge after this but of course we have major uh pete wind how are you I mean, fantastic. Fantastic. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Uh, you are the public, uh, public affairs officer for the Second Security Force Assistance Brigade, That's right? That's right, yeah. Today and I am. Today you are. <laughs> and off of that, what are you? Behind the scenes? Uh, after that, I'm always behind the scenes. Are you a husband? Are you a father? I'm a husband. I'm a father. I have four beautiful children. Four. They drive me crazy, but wow. you have to love them. Do you have teenagers in there? I, yes. Wow. If, well, I have a 15 year old who I am. We're figuring it out every day. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. Love it. And of course, in the building, I also have Captain Jacob Travis. How are you, Mr. Travis? Outstanding. Thank you. Fantastic. And you, who is the SFAB team leader working here in Botswana. And of course, we have Staff Sergeant Mr. Ian Slater. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Uh, gentlemen, it's so, such a pleasure to have you in the building. And behind the scenes, I've got my favorite person, TK. Oh, of course, she hosts a show called AFN Aviano. She's behind the scenes. Don't worry, I'm trying to convince the U.S. Embassy that we should do a podcast or something. It would be nice to do it at the U.S. base on the on an airstrip or something. Just hint, hint. But moving swiftly along, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking this time to obviously come uh, to the studio directly. Uh, thank you so much for the roles that you play within, you know, the defense space. I think first and foremost, it, I must approach you. I've got to share a little story. When I was in the U.S., hey, Aisha, Aisha somewhere in the studio, I noticed that at the airport, before you can board the plane, you guys board first. That's right, yeah. Why yes. is that? Why is that? Well, you know, um, freedom's not free. I think uh, a lot of uh, Americans understand that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not something that we ask for. It's not yes. a rule. It's not a policy. Yes. It's something that the airlines um, extend um, as as a little courtesy. Uh like you know, a thank you. Yeah, you know, soldiers all around the world. Absolutely, uh, the commonality that we share, if anything, is is running face first into danger, and then also not being paid well. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, you know, doing something nice like being able to board just a little bit early is is just a nice little thing that we do. We appreciate it. We don't expect it, but yeah. but we do appreciate it. Well, yeah. th- you know, I found it very inspiring to see that. And I think it's important, as you say, to honor, you know, the, 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 the service that you guys do. Going into that element is not for Swifty Swift. But anyway, moving <laughs> swiftly along. Pete, let's kick start with you. Tell us a lot, a little bit about yourself and, of course, what you do. Yeah, I, I, I'm a U.S. Army soldier. Um, I, I'm a major. I've been in the Army for about 13 years. Years now, okay. Um, I I've loved uh, every minute the the glory, the frustrations, yeah. the teamwork. Um, it's all uh, just been a, a really good time. Uh huh. Fantastic. And and SFAB. What what is SFAB? Yeah, it's an acronym. We call it the SFAB. It stands for Security Force Assistance Brigade. I think when when people think about the U.S. Army, of course they're thinking about what they see in movies, uh-huh. right? We go, we fight for freedom, um, we we shoot guns, we roll tanks. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, a much larger part of the army that that folks um, don't really get to see because it doesn't make for good movies uh-huh. um, is we work with partner nations. Okay. So the SFAB uh, is is a new unit for the U.S. Army. Um, we were established in 2018. Oh, nice. And we're normal soldiers. We're conventional soldiers, um, and we've received a little extra training on working with. Um, our partner nations uh, all around the world. So, for example, we're we're here in Botswana. We're we're here at you know Botswana's request. Okay, they've asked us to come here. Okay, um, and they've identified some gaps um, in their own training, some things that you know we're good at, mm-hmm. um, and they've asked us to come and you know, hey, show us what you can do. Show us you know the way that you do it, and we'll decide for ourselves um, if that's the way that that we should do it as well. 
Um, so, right, like we come, we work, we live with the partner, we eat with the partner, we train with the partner, uh-huh. um, and that's what that's what Jake here, um, that's what his team does uh, every single day. They they show up, they work side by side with their BDF partner, okay, um, and they're having a good time. Oh, fantastic. Let's bring Jake into the conversation. Jake, I mean, you're here on the ground. You're obviously dealing directly with the BDF. What kinds of things are you guys doing on the ground? How's been your experience with that? Yeah. um, So prior to our arrival, we were working with the Botswana Defense Force leadership. Okay. And we identified some of the training that my team can provide specific Mm -hmm. to our, our job sets and our skill set. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are currently training on four different topics over six weeks. So we're looking at non-commissioner officer training, infantry okay. tactics. We have peacekeeping and peace support operations. Nice. And combat casualty medical care. Oh, wow. So our train- training overall, as uh, Major Wynn spoke about, is to focus the training on validating on select BDF soldiers mm-hmm. who are able to instruct these classes after we're gone. Mm-hmm. Because during our, our six-week training program, we can only teach a finite amount of soldiers. Yeah. However, the Botswana soldiers who we validated as instructors, in theory, they can eventually teach every soldier in the BDF. Oh, nice. And uh, overall training is going great. It's, yeah. it's absolutely outstanding. So it's, it's more of a skill share relationship to say, look, uh, let's share skills and let's pass down skills for capacity. Correct. Oh, fantastic. Look, let's bring Ian into the conversation. Ian, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. Fantastic. Look, uh, give us some notable examples of how you guys have been working together. What's your experience? How has been the relationship being on the ground? It's It's been great so far. Um, working with these guys, they're, uh, they take in all the information real well. Yeah. Um, and so, like you said, we're teaching these guys to be instructors. So we've had some, some great examples like uh, the other day. We were um, one of the uh, female BDF instructors. Okay. She was going through it pretty quickly. So uh, one of the other BDF instructors, more of the senior ones, kind of stepped in to to kill time. Um, mm-hmm. And he just stepped right in, took charge, and really, really helped out. So wow. it's, it's good to see that what we're teaching them is getting passed along, and they're feeling enough confidence to teach it as well. Fantastic. I think I should I should get into one of these trainings but bear with me my fitness level is terrible. Okay? You know, we can we can teach you how to pull a casualty out from under fire and take care of them. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, but more importantly, uh we think that these BDF instructors yes. uh can teach you uh how to do it like um Sergeant Slater here yeah. <laughs> said, right? The entire yeah. goal uh, of the program um, is to show that the BDF are in charge of um, every piece of it. Um, Jake here mentioned that, uh, you know, they worked with BDF leadership. Okay. And BDF leadership, they're the ones who identified, hey, we need this kind of medical training. Hey, we want, um, you know, our non-commissioned officers to get trained. Hey, we want these infantry tactic um, type things. Uh, and then, right, we train up the instructors, and as soon as they can, and it's very quick, they're very capable, um, they take charge. Wow, powerful stuff. Major Win. let me ask you this question, and it's an important question from a macroeconomic level, a democracy level, and of course a defense level. How does this particular Skillshare initiative uh, help Botswana, and how does the U- U- United States benefit? Just break it down for us, that kind of um, benefit we get from these bilateral agreements or training platforms. Right, Uh You know, the fact of the matter is is that we're just not alone in the world. Absolutely. Uh, We have to live together or we die alone. Mm -hmm. And what we want people here in Botswana to know is that we're a trusted partner. Uh Um, By spending time together, by training together, by working together, by really getting to know each other, we can build those uh, relationships of trust. More importantly, by passing on these skill sets. Um, the Botswana Defense Force is more capable. We want Botswana to be able to manage their own security needs. They do. They yes. do manage their own uh, security needs. Mm-hmm. But like I said, they've identified some gaps in capability where maybe we can um, show a different way. Um, and if that works for Botswana, uh, then that's good. But it affects everybody. Um, yeah. It affects uh, Botswana. It affects people in this region. It affects Africa. Um, so Botswana's ability to take care of itself, and, and once again, they do, um, provides a kind of stability for everybody, including 
um, the United States. Well, it's Gabs FM Power to engage your world. The Stars and Stripes show. Gentlemen, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, there's a lot of ladies in Gabs FM and they're quite... Um, uh, blown away about how you guys are looking. These gentlemen came in in fully fledged army uh, outfits uh, from boot to top. Thank you so much for what you're doing for uh, this nation. And of course, you know, whether we like it or not, don't give me a fish, teach me how to fish. Basically, in a nutshell, that's what you're saying. Amen. We're trying to teach, you know, people how to be independent in terms of security matters. One day, maybe I'll do a press up challenge or one day I'll be in one of their trainings, but I'll most likely be on Instagram and, you know, using that platform for content because there's no way I could keep up. Gentlemen, Major, let me give you an opportunity to share your parting statement. Uh, we love Botswana, a beautiful country, beautiful yeah. people. Uh, we're happy to be here. Have you had any any sesua or any food like uh, BW food? Too much food. Too much. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to you, <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, Jake, thank you so much. Of course, Ian, thank you so much, gentlemen. And apparently, Jake says he can do how many press ups in one sitting? Um, you want to find out after this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're gonna give me a number. You gotta give me a number. Uh, we we can go for. You want to go for a hundred? Let's do a hundred. Okay. We're yeah. gonna do a hundred. Maybe we'll put it on the US NBC uh, social media pages. Kings and Queens. We're crossing over to Ask the Shah J. Let's go. It's Gabs FM Power to Engage. Your world, Tepotola, Stop the War, taking us 11.22. And of course, one of my favorite segments is called Ask the Shah J or Ask the Acting Ambassador segment. This is where we ask you to share those burning questions with the Acting Ambassador of the United States Embassy to Botswana, Her Excellency Amanda Jacobson. And here's question one. What are your hobbies? I wonder this is going to be interesting. Let us do question one. Let me do this. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Slowly, slowly. Question one. What are your hobbies? So I love to be outside more than anything. So hiking, swimming, you know, just being outdoors in nature really is relaxing. Um, I also love to read. Um, I try to read two to three books a week for professional development and then also to relax. I also love language learning. For my third career choice, I think I want to be a travel writer. It's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. Powerful questions and, you know, hobbies are important things for our everyday life. And, of course, for our mental health is very important. Let me ask you this, uh, Your Excellency. You've lived in and visited many different countries. Which one was your favorite and, of course, why? why? I wonder if she'll say what's on. This is a really tough question. Um, since I joined the State Department in 2006, I've lived in Togo, Nepal, Botswana, Ethiopia, and the United States. And before I became a diplomat, I was a student and teacher in Latin America for over six years, living in places from Argentina to Uruguay to Honduras to Mexico. The places where I really felt at home were Nepal due to the mighty Himalayas and Argentina where I was an exchange student for a year in a rural place of 20,000 people who didn't speak English. But I must say that Botswana will always seem like home to my family and I as I've spent more time here than in any other country. And my children grew up here. Our family has so many memories. Wow, that's fantastic. We need to give you a nomang. Madam, let me ask you this question and the last question. I hope it's not too personal, but who cooks in the house? Who is the main cook? You know, food is the only way to my stomach, but of course, it's an important question for you. So my husband is a teacher, so he usually gets home earlier than I do. So during the work week, Monday through Friday, um, he usually takes the lead on cooking dinner and I take over on the weekends. Um, Haberoni has such great grocery stores and I love going out on the weekends, going shopping and finding different ingredients to try new foods. We're very adventurous eaters and rarely cook the same foods twice. I haven't learned a good recipe yet for Mopani worms, but it's on my list. Well, I think... I think the next time you're definitely here, we're going to do the Mopani Worm Challenge. I think I should do that every single time we have the Stars and Stripes show. I should have a Pani Nyan Kahai Bekeret. 
That's right. <laughs> well, it's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World. If you've just joined us, welcome. You're on the Stars and Stripes show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Mission in Khabroni in partnership with Gabs FM, America in Botswana. And we're moving swiftly along to one of my favorite segments. It's called Chasing the Dream. And, of course, uh, this segment is very important. This is where you get to hear all about the educational opportunities that the U.S. Embassy offers through its Education USA office from, pers- from prospective students, academics, and of course professionals Remember this is an important uh, Component of the show To bring the segment to life and light We've got the education advisor Uabile Tau From the US Embassy Public Affairs Office To highlight some exciting news And upcoming opportunities Me and her can talk for Days and days and days. Yeah. So we're going to keep it short and sweet. How are you? I'm doing great, sir. How are you doing? Ah, fantastic. Oh, Talk yeah. to me. How was your weekend? My weekend was super fabulous. Yeah. I had an opportunity to actually um, spend some time with some little league. Okay. Football. Yeah. So yeah. the guys were playing football and I was there cheering it on. Yes. Because that's what I do on my spare time. I Anybody love it. who can do a football is. You know, that's me. Mm. Love it. Let's talk community colleges. What you got for us and what should we know from you? Fantastic. Uh, For the past weeks, we've been talking about going to study in the U.S. And one of the concepts or misconceptions, or it actually could be true, is that people actually feel that it's very expensive to go study in the U.S. So I wanted to introduce another pathway for you to actually get into, to do your degree. Okay. And that could be more cost effective and those are community colleges. Okay. So that's like a two plus two pathway. Uh This is whereby now you can actually start first attending a community college for two years and then do the last year at at university. Okay. The great thing about it is that, you know, in terms of cost wise. Yes. Community colleges, the two years, is actually equivalent to Uh a a one year into a university. So imagine cutting four years into three years of expenditure. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's great. Um, um, And look, uh, that's fantastic. And of course, that is an important component. Mm -hmm. And let's say somebody's listening, and I always get this in my personal life. Hey, Swift, we heard you speaking to the U.S. Embassy. Where can we get more information? Kind of, you know, how can we get a hold of you? And Mm -hmm. you've always said that, look, I am available to go into schools. I'm available to go into uh, your offices. I am available engage me how do we find you first and foremost you can uh, follow us on Facebook uh-huh. uh, the US Embassy page you can also reach out to me mm-hmm. by email uh-huh. um, you can u- use our website mm-hmm. www educationusa.state.gov uh-huh. and if maybe you do have students or maybe you have a niece or one of your daughters yes I do have WhatsApp line yes so it's 76 76 604 604 864 864 that's it from 730 till 430 that's yes. the WhatsApp line will be open and Please. I'll be able to reach out. During working hours. During and working I'm hours. hours. But yeah. again, I appeal. Please, there are so many opportunities that I would love to get into organizations. Mm. Whether or not, I know even the government of Botswana has this. Um, sometimes they have like 30 minutes uh, that they reserve before they actually start work. Mm-hmm. Anybody who would want me to come and actually talk at length. Please do reach out, make okay. an appointment. So that is the private sector. Yeah. Uh, Even here at Gabs uh, FM. So that's private sector. That is schools. Yes. You as the U- Education USA have got so many components yes. that you'd like to share Fantastic. with Botswana yes. to say, look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what opportunities I have from co- community colleges to academics to professional opportunities for you and I. I know there's Broadcasting, there's media, mm-hmm. Zonke Bonke Zalan. Yes. We have a, 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 a variety of programs that mm. you can actually, you know, tap into. All that you need is just a little bit of information. And all that's all that I'm asking to give you the information you will decide. Whether you're an NGO, even tutoring centers, because wow. you've got students there, I can come wow. and just give me some time. Even 30 minutes is enough for me to engage with you, your pupils, and everybody else. But we're going to do it having fun because I love. 
have some fun. <laughs> you know, I did a course, a show with you. Thank you so much, uh, Matau, for, you know, uh, giving us information. You know, I always believe knowledge is what can change your life. And That's once right. granted knowledge, your eyes open and you can see a lot more. Thank you so much. Thank you said you. we should head over to the U.S. Embassy Facebook and Instagram as well as Twitter pages to learn a lot more. The partner, uh, and that is important, chasing the dream. Yes. Uh, my favorite person, one of my favorite person says the dream is free, but the hustle you got to pay you for. You got it. You, you got know it. this. Kings and Queens, <laughs> let's continue conversation. 11.30 is your time. And of course, now we're going to go into the partner uh, spotlight. We have some amazing Botswana who are in the building. And of course, these are the future leaders of this nation. These are people who have directly benefited from some of the U.S. Embassy programming. We thought, let's hear from them. Ghana, sometimes we people might think we're preaching propaganda. So it's, a, it's better that we hear from from Botswana to say this is the experience. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The Stars and Stripes show is brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. It's Cabs FM Power to Engage Your World and welcome to the Stars and Stripes show proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy America in Botswana and the theme for today is defense and of course today we're talking the partner spotlight this is where I get my favorite people in the building. If you are a Yali alumni, a Mandela Washington fellow alumni or were in the IVLP which I must say I've been a part of or interacted with the U.S. Embassy on different projects, grants we want to hear from you. You know why this is important. You know, I believe that testimonials are very important and it's an important component because sometimes Botswana just need to hear from other Botswana of uh, your relationship and in the building I've got two phenomenal Botswana who've done so well I've got Re Peño Mutrahudi from Hot Y. Peño is an instructor so we're going to keep this theme on trainers and instructors and of course hear from him. He also happens to be a Yali alumni. Peño welcome to the show sir. Thank you very much, sir. I don't see. I wasn't told that was part of today's no, uh, program. Your, your, your whole entire <laughs> you as Penu is part of the program. So let's put it this way: you owe me a packet of Biltong, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Look, please share a little bit about you, who Penyo is, your professional background, and of course, you know, your experience with Yali and how that contributed to who Penyo is today, uh, yes. how it changed your life from your professional um, career, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Well, I mean, my background is media. I've been doing media forever and ever. I think since 2006, you know, yeah. um, started off in radio and uh-huh. then moved into the newspaper business. Nice. Um, and eventually went into the management side of uh, media. Okay, nice. Um, but yeah, about a couple of years ago, I made a career switch and went into uh, communications. And now I'm with uh, Hotwire, which is the country's leading um, integrated uh Consul- communications consultancy okay. um, and I head up uh, the Hotwire Academy which is our training division and we oh, focus wow. on communications training so all aspects of communications training but okay. before all of that I uh, had the opportunity to uh, be part of the uh, Yali one of the Yali cohorts um, okay. under entrepreneurship and business um, nice yeah which for me was an important thing because I'd gone into m- Business management I'd gone into managing media assets But okay. had no formal training okay. And here was this opportunity Which uh, first of all was free All I had to do was show up uh-huh. So why not um, So I took that up And yeah it's It's been really really great Okay um, And you know The opportunities Are constantly uh, Presenting themselves mm-hmm. um, But I think you know it's It's good to Have benefited from The programs of The US government And uh, eventually be able to almost give back as a partner, as a supplier to the mm-hmm. U.S. government mm-hmm. um, as we are as Hotwire now. So, yeah. It's so, so, so for uh, Motswano already saying who does not know Yali, who does not know what the program entails, walk us through. You left Botswana, 
you said it was free. Do you, do you so, just arrive at yeah. the airport? <laughs> you know, just walk us through that experience. Yeah. Where in the US did you go? How long were you there? When you say entrepreneurship, what kind of, were you going to universities? Did you meet Mark Zuckerberg? You know, <laughs> not quite. Just, uh, walk us so, through that so experience. I, I think the way I understand it is there are two programs. So okay. uh, Lillian was fortunate enough to go on. Uh, Honorable. Uh, uh, Honorable Lillian yeah. was fortunate enough to go on uh, the Yali program that uh, took her to the States. Okay. Um, so I did the Yali uh, Regional Leadership Center program, which nice. is based in South Africa, oh, and it was nice. all online. Okay. Um, and that's done in partnership with uh, UNISA, the okay. uh, UNISA School of Business Leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I did under the uh, Business and Entrepreneurship Development nice. Program, nice. which is about six weeks. But I mean, it's a there's a process to it. So there's the uh, call out and then there's the application uh-huh. and then you get your phone call and uh-huh. then uh, there's a set of questions that you're asked, mm-hmm. um, which then are put together with your initial application. Wow. Whether it's an, uh, it's an essay to say why you believe mm-hmm. um, you would gain from this and what contribution you'd make to your community upon mm-hmm. uh, graduating or finishing. So, that was my process, and um, I can't remember now how many people had um, uh, applied for, but it's always in the hundreds and hundreds, and only a handful are chosen from each Look, country. Look, I've applied and didn't make it. <laughs> so <laughs> keep, I, keep I, trying. I, I, I get it. Yeah. And was it a rich uh, program, comprehensive program? Was it? Did you earn something that, that you can apply in your everyday life today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, remember, these programs are done in partnership with uh, leading educational institutions. Uh So, I mean, the UNISA School of Business Leadership is, you know, it's right up there in terms of um, executive education or postgraduate education. So, But you're also in class with people from all walks of life, from all over Southern Africa who do different things. So when you do your assignments, you know, you are in groups with so-and-so who runs this business, so-and-so who heads up this business, you know, um, and all of that uh, experience I'm able to put into practice today in in the business that we do at the Hotwire Academy in training. Yeah. Um, And it's, it's a fusion of what you already know. And what you've now been taught, which applies across board, you know, and which is why training is so important. I mean, as I say, my background it has always been media and more radio uh, than anything. Um, and to be able to get training that fine tunes all the business stuff that you've picked up mm-hmm. and through experience and along the way and formalize it because I didn't have I any it. formal business training, okay. um, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's good. And it's pretty much what we do at the Hotwire Academy or Hotwire as a whole. It's, you know, people are trained to do certain things. Mm. Um, how do you sharpen their skills? How do you make uh, their communication more effective? You know, you, so you give them formal structured training. I like that. Um, that, it, it, you know, it's relevant to, it's got local context. It's uh-huh. an Absolutely. understanding of, you know, what do you do daily and how do you sharpen these skills to be able to be effective in your delivery. I love that. Well, it's Gabs FM Power to engage your world. Your time is 11.40 across the nation. Let me ask you, uh, uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to compress two questions into one. How do we make sure that training is credible and relevant? And my second question is, how do we get training to become more effective? And to deal with your first question, um, you have to be really careful when you select your training, right? Okay. Um, so the basic things that anybody can do is your training provider accredited. Uh-huh. Um, and are they accredited by the ultimate authority in accreditation? Yes. So uh, in Botswana context, HRDC, BQA. Yes. So that's one, one component. Okay. Secondly, um, are they offering something that you really need? Yes. You know, um, there's no point in going for training that you can't apply or is not relevant to you. Yes, of you course. Know, so how does this training grow you? Of course. Um, and then who's your trainer? What, what, I mean, to, the market today is flooded with trainers. Yes. Um, because and everybody's trying to do a masterclass. Everybody's doing a masterclass. Um, and, you know, there's, there, there are other, other factors, yes, you know, um, there's unemployment, there's everybody's going uh, virtual now. So it's obviously going to breed um, a new 
brand of trainers or entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, training as another sector that entrepreneurs can go into. So people go into that. So see if your trainer is the ultimate authority in uh-huh. that space once again. That's always important. The yeah. same way as you choose a university anywhere in the world, you uh-huh. know. Um, the US Embassy says or the US government says there's this opportunity. You've got a roster of universities to choose from. And you see, you know, what is their reputation in this space? Of course. Um, is this more suitable for me? So there's that. You've got to do the homework. Yeah. And then most importantly, does it work for your market? Yeah. Um, you know, people are in business all over the world. Absolutely. But does it apply to your local market? Is there local context? Is it relevant? Um, you know, so I think that's an important aspect. And in terms of effectiveness, um, First of all, your trainer has to provide effective training. But I think most importantly, if you've trained in any course, it's important for you to go back for refresher courses. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you just, just sharpen the saw. Don't stop learning. Absolutely. Um, it's just such an important thing. You know, you come to the Hotwire Academy and we uh, train you as an executive on media engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, come back six months because... Swift as a as a broadcaster is changing as well. You're keeping up with the times of uh, uh, broadcasting. New elements are coming in. You know, you're not just doing traditional broadcasting. There's uh, social media playing at it. So your delivery will be very different in six months from now, a year from now. And it's important that whoever your guest is, is up to speed with that level of training. So we always recommend, you know, if you come to us or you go to any trainer and you do whatever course, don't leave it there because the world evolves Absolutely. and it mustn't leave you behind. So refresher courses, very important. Absolutely. Um, and whatever you learn, a good trainer will give you takeaways. Yeah. You know, they'll give you um, stuff to do at home. Just keep doing it. Practice is, and you know, from as a broadcaster, you get better with practice, right? Absolutely. Like the more interviews yeah. you do, yeah. um, you know, people don't know this, but every broadcaster is nervous before their show. All the um, all the, if you're not nervous, then yeah, your absolutely. heart is not in it. Yeah. Um, and to get better, you know, you just constantly do it. Um, but it has to be the right training. It, and that's the only way it can be effective. Otherwise, it's just it's money down a hole. It's time down a hole. Um, and uh, no return on investment. Thank you so much, Remotlawodi. Look, uh, whether we like it or not, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time and its important component. We must always sharpen the saw. And wherever you go, I always say that storytelling is a component of life. To be able to write a proposal, you're telling a story. Branding a package, you're telling a story. Applying for university, you're, applying, you're telling a story. So it's yeah. an important component. I'm a bit rough around the edges, but hey, Moving swiftly (laughs) along, pun intended. Look, welcome to the show, America in Botswana, the Stars and Stripes show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Mission in Botswana. And of course, people don't know this, right, about Lillian. But uh, we have Honorable, I call her Honorable (laughs) Lillian Moremi. I met this lady way before... Uh, a lot of my personal achievements and I've always been inspired by her from a distance. I love what she does because you can always tell that she's got a love for the nation. I believe when you have a love for something you take care of the younger generation because the younger generation are our future leaders. I've seen her on our social medias go out into remote areas of this country. What is there? And she's always going you know, I, I and, and forgive me, let me call it i think she's one of the greatest capacitators she yeah. tries to capacitate the young person to say look you've got to start thinking of your future you've got to th- start investing in now for a better tomorrow her name is honorable lillian moremi yeah. i'm going to if i could vote for somebody to become the minister of education or basic education definitely be her a yearly 2018 alumni lillian welcome to the show how are you my friend I'm so sorry. <laughs> How are you, my friend? I'm very well, hey. Oh, you know, thank hey. you for what you're doing on behalf of young people, Shame. Uh, thank you so much. Look, the Mandela Washington Fellowship, your experience. Why did you apply? What was your experience? Especially being, I'm going to call you a social entrepreneur yeah. because you're not just in, you're not just a capitalist. You're trying to do business with a difference. Mm. And just walk us through your experience. Mm. 
Why is it one of the rates? Am I a lemma? Salute you. Exactly. So, you, you know, for me, networking is, is it's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, I strongly believe in the people around me. Uh-huh. Um, and so when... when um, they Can you just the, pull your mic, my friend, oh, closer to you? Emma. Sorry. No worries. I haven't done an interview in over three years, so I'm yeah, just nervous. This guy want to shake it out, shake it out, Emma. You know, when Yali started actually in 2014, right? Yes. I've always been applying for Yali. I applied for Yali for five consecutive years. Hello. I've always, always went for interviews, hey. but I never made it. Wow. By the fifth year, I was telling the, the, the panelists that, guys, no, it's up too until much. you accept me, I'm going to keep bothering you and applying for Yali. Coco. So five years later, wow. I get to travel to the US. <laughs> but you know, you know what that says? That says a lot about your character in terms of tenacity, in terms of perseverance, in terms of saying, look, I can see that this is opportunity. Yeah. And, you know, I think we need to applaud you on that. Now, talk to us about the experience. So, Yali was six weeks? Yeah, it's actually six weeks. So I had the opportunity to go to the U.S. Mm-hmm. And the reason really why I wanted to, another fun reason why I wanted to apply for Yali was, Hey, who's going to pay for everything? Flights, accommodation, mm. hang out with the cool kids across Africa. Yes. And, you know, I got to experience that I was actually placed at Dartmouth College, which okay. is actually an Ivy League institution. Wow. So we, I was also under the business and entrepreneurship uh, cohort because wow. I run my own business at the time. My business is called Career Coaching. Nice. So at the time when I was studying, I was asking myself, so Leland, how do I make money? How do I actually turn my skills into a business? Yeah. yeah. And because, you know, things are all over the, 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 the show. I said, you know, maybe I need this program just to make sense of what I want to do with my business as Emma. a trainer, as a rapporteur, as a, as a facilitator. Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, the program really afforded me an opportunity to learn to network and to really share about my country mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to learn you know, the tools, the processes, the systems of how I can actually just formalize my business at the time. This is in 2018. Wow. And I must say, really, uh, you know, the opportunity was amazing. Mm-hmm. I have an incredible connection of young people all over Africa, but not wow. only in Africa, even in the U.S. Some of my clients, and these are the benefits of Yali, I have clients from the U.S. just the other Worry. day, last month. Why invoice? Cli- I invoice a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Because you know, you know, as young people, whenever we go into business, we're always thinking, ah, but Botswana is so small. Yes. But my market is the globe. And so wow. this is what Yali has afforded me, the That's opportunity to have clients from all over Africa, to have clients even in the US. So wow. I'm forever eternally grateful. And did you have to pay anything? I mean, once you got confirmation, did you have to pay anything? I mean, you're out in the US six weeks. Nanakeloko, Washington, D.C. I got the billion, I got the $15. Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have fifteen dollars. Talk to me about. Do, do you remember the the brown envelopes? Yes. We used to get brown envelopes, and you know the they had the dollars. You know, <laughs> the, the, legal go, ones. the legal ones go and buy books, and you know we'd buy books, we'd buy, you know, we'd go buy clothes mm. and all the cool things. Um, really. Sorry, what's the question again? Like, uh, <laughs> obviously, did, did you have to pay for the 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 the, the program? Thank you so much, Sid. You see, I hang around people who talk so much that sometimes I just lose my train don't of Don't worry. Don't Look, worry. Look, it's, it's a free program. Wow. All you just have to do is dedicate your time Emma. and your enthousi- enthusiasm into the program. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, everything is really paid for. Um, even the, the, the excursions. We went for a lot of excursions. Wow. We went to cool places. Uh, we went to see how businesses in America are running and how we wow. can actually adapt some of the systems, which is very helpful. So I think for really any young person who'd like to find out about the Yali Mandela Washington Fellowship, mm-hmm. please just log on to the state.gov website. Okay. And actually, I think it's going to be opening very soon. So mm-hmm. I'd really encourage as many young people to take advantage of this incredible opportunity. I'm going to try again. You've inspired <laughs> me. Hey, can I, especially that cohort, yeah, entrepreneurship. Dude. A lot of people don't know that one is not easy to get into. Yeah. So the fact yeah. that the two of you made it, it goes to show that you know the quality of caliber of yeah. human that you are let me say look you touched on what you've achieved what are you currently working on on yeah. the ground today you know whether we like it or not 
There's seed time and there's harvest. Sometimes you have to sacrifice in terms of training in order to become a better entrepreneur, a better business. I must say, I'm totally inspired. You know, and a lot of people might think that that just comes easy, yeah. but it also comes from your ability to apply what you've learned and put it into practice. Just talk to us. What are you currently working on and what's happening here in Botswana on the ground? Yeah, I did. I did mention that I run my own company, Emma. Uh, but I do a lot of community engagement. Oh, nice. And, you know, often at times I meet a lot of young people who say, oh, Lillian, we really want to do cool stuff for our community, uplift the young people, but yes. we don't have funding. Yes. So one of the cool things about being a Yali alumni Emma. is that you have an opportunity to bid for, I mean, to submit proposals okay. for the projects that you want to do in the community. Emma. And one of the amazing things that I really love about the Yali Network is mm-hmm. that Yali fellows or Yali alumni, mm-hmm. we love to partner. It's all about Collaboration. Collaborations is key. Moto le say, moto kom. Exactly. They say, you know, success is a team sport. Yes. And so currently, it's going to be starting on Monday. We're going to be in Palape. So... Alumni, we call we call ourselves exchange alumni, and basically okay. these are young people uh, who've been through the Yali programs. Emma. And we also have one lady. Her name is Sarah Damon. She's actually American. She okay. was a Fulbright scholar, and okay. uh, two of my colleagues based here in Botswana, they Stebato Jogonya and uh, Tato Mbudi and myself, Lillian Moremi. Emma. We we came together and we saw this application for funding mm-hmm. to do a community project mm-hmm. uh, through the alumni alumni website. Oh, nice! And all the alumni. If if you are an alumni and you are not on that website, please just get onto that because mm-hmm. it's it's full of opportunities. So we applied for this program in May, um, mm-hmm. early early this year. And you know, it's a process. It takes time. There's a lot of back and forth. A lot of you know trying to understand the needs of the community you are trying to serve. And so wow. we put together a, a, a program where we really want to go into the villages, but we're going to start with Palape. Uh, so for the whole of next week, we're going to be in Palape training 30, um, 30 young people on okay. sustainable development goals. We want to build SDGs. SDG champions. Wow. Uh, and so it's a fund. It's The fund is actually called Citizen Diplomacy Action Fund. Wow. Um, so... You know, we, 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 we've had the opportunity. We're going to be in, in Cresta for the entire week. So that's what the fund paid for. It pays for the venue. It pays yeah. for, uh, you know, all the other logistical issues that needs to go into the training. Okay. And, you know, even post the training, because these are young people who are looking for employment. These are young people who are looking to start up their own businesses or really wanting to do community projects. So mm-hmm. that's going to be the focus uh, for the program next week. So it's about localizing SDGs, uh, Palap SDG champions. Wow, shout out to you, Honorable. I hope you're going to go into politics one way or another. Maybe I'm prophesying you or something, but I'm we hope that I, 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 you, you're with me. I am with you. Watch the space. Watch then you will be your <laughs> campaign manager because came to our communication you know, about uh, our communications and articulating yourself in such a great way shout out to Hotwire Academy shout out to the two of you you know whether we like it or not here's what I say I say you know we can only be the change that we want to see we we as much as the US embassy is creating an environment of capacitating us the onus is on us yeah. as Botswana to change our lives and the future of this nation so shout out to what you guys are doing i'm so inspired i love what you said collaboration 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 i call it motulemotokom because i think that you know the word collaboration is part and parcel of who we are as mm, Botswana mm. you know motulemotok Home is a beautiful example of what we can do together when we have mm. one vision. Mm. So thank you so much to the both of you. Shout out to you and wishing you all the success in what you're doing. I'll be definitely colliding with you somewhere, somewhere along the lines. Yeah. Kings and Queens, let's continue conversation. I've got a giveaway if you're interested. I hope you are listening. 3956962 is my uh, studio line. Plus 267-3956962 is my WhatsApp line. 14962 is my SMS line. Let me tell you something. The dream is free, but the hustle you got to pay for. But today I'm giving you my hala hala hala. Mam pempe alekeretza does it. All you have to do is answer a few questions and we take it from there. 1156 is your time. I'm only giving you exactly... 
two minutes. Good evening. Power to engage in your world is on 94.1 FM. The Stars and Stripes show was brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. It's Gabs FM Power to Engage Your World 3956962 I've got some goodies to give away Proudly brought to you by the Stars and Stripes show uh, Brought to you by the US Embassy in Botswana I said good evening But you know You guys are my people Lies or I'm a nocturnal animal I happen to do things at night That are appropriate Not inappropriate 3956962 Call in I'm going to ask you a simple simple question And then you might get to win something I think I should just ask them What uh, I'll see I'll see There's a there's a question I was supposed to ask It's in line with the military But I'm, I think it might be a bit difficult for you Call in on 3956962 Ladies and gentlemen Kings and queens Beautiful people The US Embassy has a lot to offer you young people yeah. uh, academics business people entrepreneurs and let me tell you something i feel you let me tell you what i experienced uh, lillian i've got a good friend of mine from greece by by those pictures that we see on social media <laughs> i'll talk about it after this three nine five six nine six two but in greece right by What's the tourism destination? And she's always, she's in the hospitality industry in that area. And she's like, Swift, whenever you want to understand the model of tourism from that side of the world, let's collaborate. And that's what these things do for us. We've got no excuse to fail. You know what I'm saying? We as young people sitting in this room are privileged. We've got no room for failure. The fact that we have exposure is what we can put on the ground for our own people. And that's why the U.S. Embassy uh, programming is so important. It's not necessarily about politics. It's about bilateral relations. It's about shared prosperity. It's about Motole Motokom. And whether we like it or not, we have what it takes to take this country or steer this country forward. Forward, our private sector can grow. Talk to yeah. me. Yeah, because you know, so if when we're talking about these guys, were talking about themselves and the projects that they do. It's all about passion. Absolutely. And if there's one thing, the honorable here, I've seen her do. <laughs> ja, 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 ja. You know what? I saw her one time. She was addressing students, Emma. and these students were like just like looking her staring. And then all of a sudden, she jumps on the table. And she's addressing students on the table. Wow. The first thing that I thought to myself, if you are willing to look silly for the benefit of somebody else that they may prosper, yes. then that in itself speaks volume. And, and, I, and that's it. And I think we have to describe Lillian. <laughs> Lillian is very short. <laughs> Thank okay, you. she's not tall. Let me rather not say she's short. She's not tall. She's a oh, petite gosh. lady. Yes. So she looks like she's 16. Or she's you. aging like fine wine. She looks like she's 16. She so ages backwards. She ages backwards. <laughs> so when you see her, you think, ah, okay, she's a walkover. Ah, oh, Anka Kamareza. Yeah. But in, indeed, she is such a powerhouse. Ladies and gentlemen, we got no calls, but don't worry, we'll definitely give away. We'll post it on our social media. Thank you so much to the two of you. Penyo, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. Hey, 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 hey. I, I was going to say, you know, we must encourage uh, Yali alumni as well to give back. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, recently I uh, joined uh, the, the new reviewers panel for a new Yali program, the WASH cohort, um, and interviewed some of the guys who wanted to join the program. Wow. And, you know, because you understand the program and we understand what it gives to people and you understand being an interviewee, yeah. um, you know, it's a little easier. So I'd encourage, Sometimes. you know, alumni to also participate and give back. Oh, absolutely. Way, yeah. Absolutely. Please like all the U.S. Embassy Facebook pages. There is grants available for you and I. There's programming available for you, uh, you and I. Academic, uh, entrepreneurship, you name it. Whether you're a journalist or a sculptor, there's definitely something for you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning.